When Walls Dance is a live performance bringing three art forms together. One is the classical dance form of Bharatanatyam, the other is the Varli art form which is a tribal art form and animation. The perfect blend of technology and traditional arts. Uh, the seed of this idea was sown in the year 2019, uh, in the month of August. I finished my riyas, my regular practice and as I was taking down some notes and I was drawing some of my dance movements, I could draw parallels between the stick figures in Bharatanatyam and the Varli art form. Instantly there was a connect that I found and I started exploring the idea of bringing these two art forms together. Bharatanatyam is my mainstay, it's my idiom, it's my medium of communication and I really wanted to find a way out how I can tell the story about this art form or a character who is probably from this village and how do I communicate her story using Bharatanatyam. Uh, definitely my uh, uncle Rajendra Chaudhary who has done research for about 20 years in the Varli art form immediately came on board. Uh, he gave me a book which spoke all about the Varli life, uh, about their culture, the traditions. So immediately when Raju uncle came on board, we made that visit to the village and lots of ideas came about. I could see the lifestyle, the culture, their association with the land, the nature. After my fair share of research, I came back home and I started writing a little story. So I wove a story around this little girl Champa and her relationship with this one tree that was planted on the day she was born. And that was the beginning of this entire endeavor. Uh, through my entire process of uh, understanding what I want to do, the one thing that I was very clear about is that I needed the Varli art form to be showcased in its uh, absolute richness and I wanted to do justice to the art form. And I don't think I could do justice to the art form unless and until I take the support of some visual uh, imagery. So immediately I knew I had to get uh, Upasana on board. When Prachi shared her concept with me, I was immediately on board. Uh, the idea of having a Jugalbandi of our artistic practices is something that we were really looking for a project to do, uh, for us to you know jam together. And uh, this was the perfect combination of completely different mediums of storytelling, but which were also complementary. So Upasana Natoji, who is my collaborator, jumped into the project. She is equally passionate about this whole thing and she came up with some beautiful ideas of how we could bring the visual imagery to support the dance. So uh, coming from Raju uncle, he would sketch these figures he would immediately send them to Upasana and Upasana knew exactly how to translate it into animation. So the coming together of all these forces led to the happening of When Walls Dance. Uh, talking about research, I think any project, if you really want to delve deep into it and if you want to bring out its essence, it's important as artists that we spend some time with it. And I think thanks to COVID, we also got a lot of time to spend with this project. It will be almost four years now since Upasana and I are working on this together. And it's been an absolute joy ride. So uh, if we talk about research, first of all, I was very happy because uh, Rajendra Chaudhary ji, he already has done a lot of research in this subject. So his 20 years, he has literally offered selflessly to this project. Apart from that, he took me to the village. We met the people. We spent time with them. We asked them different questions. We danced with them. We ate with them. Uh, we tried uh, their cuisine. In fact, in one of our trips, uh, we even uh, attended the Tsauk making uh, ritual. So this is a ritual which happens before a wedding in the family. So all the women come together and they draw this beautiful artwork. So we had lots of videos where we captured all of this. And um, so it's all about the process of distillation. Any project or any production when it comes together, it's not necessary that you put in everything that you have uh, witnessed or seen. But um, having seen it so closely, that really helped because I have been able to understand that culture beautifully and especially the way they are with nature. There is such a beautiful coming together of nature and human life uh, and that is what we see when we 
spend some time with these tribes and these are indigenous tribes like varli the uh, the word varli comes from the word varar which is land so that's the kind of connect that they have with the mother earth uh then talking about research of course we had uh, to spend a lot of time uh, we met bhagwan kadu so bhagwan kadu is uh, a very very celebrated artist from the varli tribe and he has made these beautiful masks so the masks are also a part of the production which uh, you will see when you see the production and uh, these have been painted beautifully by my uncle who's also an artist and what is the flavor that that brings into the production what value addition it does is something uh, that you will really enjoy stage visuals are used for many performances and gigs all over the world for various kinds of shows but not so much for classical music and dance and definitely not in the indian context a lot of bharatanatyam dancers uh, classical dancers and musicians feel that they need the visuals or a person needs visuals only if the performance itself is not strong enough but uh, if it's done in a nuanced way understanding the medium uh, with the depth that it requires it is something which can support the performance and not take away from it as a bharatanatyam dancer myself i understand what it is like to bring alive a story through movement through abhinaya th- through nitya the dancer is the sutradhar the dancer brings the story alive the visuals support the dancer in the process so the visuals can never overtake uh, the performance and the story which is being played out on stage that is when it is a real collaboration and a jugal bandi for when walls dance my hope is to bring alive a painting many paintings created through the wali style of art and prachi brings her story and plays it out within that world so it's not uh, it's it's not a process of uh, you know overshadowing each other at all it is holding hands together to reach out to newer audiences uh that's what we hope we really hope that we can bring together various audiences bring together various mediums uh because finally what is important is the story then came the stage of you have the script in hand and you know that there's going to be animation to support the story but the main backbone of the entire production is obviously the music again came the big question of bharatanatyam and varli art coming together so i knew for sure that i had to have the sound backing of my carnatic music because that is going to be you know through which i'll be speaking the language of bharatanatyam but at the same time to do justice to the story of a varli tribe i have to have the local flavor so then uh, for the music i decided to bring on two beautiful wonderful talented people one is satish krishnamurthy who of course came with the entire bharatanatyam sound foundation and of course there was swapnil sapekar who again is also a part very deeply rooted in the culture uh, he is very familiar with the language because uh, the varli speak a dialect of marathi so he knew the language very well and we knew that we wanted to get that flavor so swapnil and satish came together swapnil wrote some beautiful songs composed them and satish of course brought in the alaripu and the tillana and together it has been such a fun 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 uh, enjoyable journey uh, coming back to uh, the process of the music making that itself was very exciting so we took a trip to wada we met the musicians also from there and we had a very good uh, jam session a very good session with them they played all the cymbals and many other instruments and a very wonderful day it was and from then i you know went through the whole uh, music again the videos and we are taking the musicians to the studios and making them play their music and using the elements uh, for our 
project and it was such a fun day that day because how satish has managed to bring their music their tala system and then the very structured carnatic tala system together it's been like an absolutely fantastic uh, piece of work uh, we had a lot of fun in the recording and i am hoping they also had because you know for the very first time some of them had come into a recording studio uh, there were microphones and headphones and you know all of that so yeah so that's how the music came about tapan ji from trio digital he mixed the entire thing and has been so patient about the entire recording process so the music i hope you enjoy the music because we have made it with a lot of love and a lot of effort Uh, about the mask i want to mention so bohada is a very traditional ritual uh, in the varli tribe uh, this is an indigenous tribe and we know that everything that they do is about nature is about their land it's about their cattle and because farming is their mainstay the one thing that they really uh, pray for and respect offer their gratitude to is rain so bohada is a ritual it's a ritual dance that they perform to invoke the rain gods and i found it very exciting and i wanted to incorporate this in the production because it had this amazing performative uh, character because of the use of masks so we have the devi mask we have the there is something called song song is when uh, the men dress up with this devi mask and they just walk all through the village with loud music and drums and everything and that is a kind of a celebration that they uh, they perform to invoke the rain gods so i knew i wanted to use this as a part of this production so there are three masks which i'm using as a part of this um which is quite interesting and i think you'll like it um it's a very funny thing but on my very first trip to the varli village i didn't have anything i didn't have a story i didn't have characters i literally didn't have anything but the one thing that i had was my costume so it became such a joke that i don't know what i'm doing i know i'm bringing these two art forms together but you know what at least i have my costume ready because the minute we entered the village we went into the shop we saw how the locals dress and they have this very traditional fabric a cotton very light beautiful soft cotton that they wear and the khan blouse as we all know which is a very typical uh, maharashtrian uh, weave and i just picked up all these fabrics then they had jewelry they had shops uh, where the jewelry was set and i picked up all of this jewelry the kadas the baju buns and everything and then of course uh, my uncle rajendra choudhury he is an artist he even made some of the traditional jewelry he is so hands on when it comes to this project like i really don't know what i would have done without him uh actually this project would not have happened if he wasn't involved in it in the first place because be it research be be it getting the right kind of people whether it's costume whether it's jewelry whether it's music whether it's the lyrics he has just been a part of every single aspect in this entire pro production so i have immense gratitude for all his contribution 